William Hunt's several role sponsors the Trilby Tour. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. It's back. Last year, the Trilby Tour brought it all back home and returned to Stoke Park, the venue for the very first tournament back in 2007. In perfect conditions and glorious surroundings, it was a day of sun, serious golf and holes in one, with no quarter asked and none given. Come the final reckoning, it was down to four men, Carl Powell, Ian Barker, Nigel Blackford and Julian Hayward to go head-to-head -head in the three-hole playoff to see who would become 2012 world champion. Sadly, Mr Hayward lost the ability to pitch and putt. And Mr Blackford, well, he just got lost, totally lost. On the final green, it was the big man, Carl Powell, who looked in control. But then, the king of the putts, Ian Barker, sank this beauty to force another trip down the first playoff hole, with everything still in the balance. Finally though, Carl sank this superb long putt of his own to be crowned world champion, and the celebrations began. But who will triumph in the Trilby in 2013? This year's odyssey begins right now. This is the cradle of civilization. This place gave the world the best bands, amazing culture, and the greatest football team on the planet. I was born five minutes up the road from here, and today we're bringing the world's fiercest amateur golf tournament to Marriott Worsley Park to find the champion of Lancashire. Another year, another 1,200 amateur golfing gladiators faced professional pressure in the battle to reach the Trilby Tour World Championship final to be held in the north of England for the first time this year at wonderful Rockcliffe Hall in Durham. But before we get there, we have eight regional heats beginning at Worsley Park in Manchester where we'll find out who is to be crowned champion of Lancashire. up in the show we'll have the best of the action from regulation play as always there's the four-man three-hole playoff to find our Lancashire champion and of course everybody's favorite feature rogues gallery when we'll have bunkers clunkers and plonkers but how close can we get to golfing perfection about that close the first ever Championship of Lancashire is being hosted at a new venue for the tour, the Marriott Worsley Park. And here's your commentator for the day, Rob Lee. Thanks, Mac. Yes, yeah, a beautiful day for golf at Worsley Park. Couldn't be better. All you need is a stellar golf game to make sure you get into that top four. That's where you've got to be. Down the first tee, old Trilby Turian Tom Muldoon. He's talking to William with his buddy, Kevin Commons. What can we say, boys? Tom, Kevin, two legends of the Trilby Tour. A reigning champion, one of the best competitors we've ever seen on this tournament. Kevin, not quite made it to the championship yet, but one of the best players I've ever seen. What's your secret, Tom? You keep winning. Well, I've won twice, um, but then again, the law of averages says I should win twice because I've played in about 100 of these. <laughs> so I suppose when you play in so many, you're bound to come up once or twice. I think if I may suggest, your secret is you play within yourself, don't you? I mean, you play to your handicap, you get through. You grind that out and you get through to that final and then it's anybody's game after that, isn't it? Well, the, the, my, my secret is I, I know I'm not as good as the likes of Kevin and other, other golfers. I know that. 
But I also know when you go out and look on the leaderboard before you go out that the scores are not that good. So all you have to do is keep the ball in play, keep it as simple as you can possibly keep it. And if you play in or around, not even play to your handicap, you will be there or thereabouts. And then the three hole playoff then, you just go for it. Kevin, one of the strongest men I know. You crunch my hand with a, with a handshake and, 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 and break my back with a hug. You hit the ball as good as anyone I've ever seen. Runner up last year, what's going to be different this year? Hey, I don't know, William. Hopefully I'll do one better this year. Uh, it's all about on the day. Uh, and as Tom said, if I keep the ball in play, um, if I have 35, 36 points, I'll be there or thereabouts. For two living Trilbitorian legends. Thanks, guys. Play well. Thank you. Thank you. Two big buddies, but this is it. It's war. Tom, the wizard Muldoon, straight as you like. And another one just splitting the fairway in half. Gorgeous tee shot. He's off and running. Over to you, big buddy. Kevin, the beast, Cummins. Club head speed, watch this. Oh! Hang time, and it flies, and it bounces, and it rolls. That's way over 300 yards, miles down there. Okay, let's catch up with William. He's on the first tee with the Worsley Club captain, Jimmy Gribbin. No. As captain of the club, what would it mean today for you to get a good, re a good never mind just a, a good result to win? It'd mean a lot for me, but with the members who have uh, witnessed it for the first time being yeah. at the Marriott in Worsley, Manchester, it's going to be a big thing, It'd give me a bit more credit in the clubhouse than uh, normal. <laughs> well, you're going out now, what can you bring um, in today for us? What can you do for us today? I'm hoping I can bring in a 30, I really do. I don't want to be in the 20s because I've, I've done that so many times over the four Four years they've been in the trouble so I'm going to get into the thirties and perhaps get in the top ten and get into the final. I think thirty will get in the top ten today. I mean right. the conditions look fantastic. There's a bit of wind up there. Yeah, Jimmy, there's a lot of people watching you today. I Play know. well. I know. Thank you. And Captain Gribbin, keen to impress. Now don't go right at the first. There's a whole bunch of hawthorn bushes down there. And he's certainly not gone right. That's going over the other side. Oh, it's a cart path, Mr. Steward. And actually, it's not too bad. But that's what everyone else thought of that. Silence was telling. Let's move ahead to the fourth, par three. Michael Norbury. Not had a rocket start to this point. Well, that's so much better. Wonderful chance for a birdie too. Up ahead at the seventh, second par three. And it's Tom Ross, plays up 11. Now this is a nasty one, water involved. You've got to be pinpoint accurate with this tee shot. And Tom just took it right to the hole. Talked about that birdie putt, an important one for, for Norbury. And he misses, doesn't make his two. Chance gone. Just a little tap in for three. But in the end, it was a did not qualify. A DNQ for Michael Norbury. 22 points. That will not make it. Let's catch up again with William. He's on the first tee talking to product expert James Graham. James, what, what, what are these guys doing? We're seeing a lot of things going out to the right. Well, what I've done, I've watched the, the golfers playing and the shots, the styles are getting an awful lot of going to the right. They're very spinny, setting off low, the golf ball's climbing very high. Now, the main reason for that is they haven't got enough loft on the driver. The more loft you have on the driver, the more natural flight you get. Sets off a little bit higher, gets a nice rounded ball flight. Yeah. And by imparting an awful lot of spin, which they're doing with not having enough loft, any fault is exaggerated. So if they start the golf ball spinning, it's going to go left to right. And instead of going 5 or 10 yards, it's going to go 10, 20, 30 yards. Is this a vanity thing these guys are using, the, the, trying to use clubs that are too good for them? Definitely. There's always been the macho part of golf that the guy wants to use a 9 degree <laughs> stiff driver, an 8 degree stiff driver. And really, you should be using 10, <laughs> 10, 11, 12 maybe even these days. Because the golf ball spins so little, you need to get that high launch angle. But the guys want these 9 degree drivers that's going to set off very low, spin maybe four and a half, five thousand 5,000 revs, when really wanting two and a half, three thousand 3,000 revs, any fault just going to get exaggerated. So instead of a fairway being 20 yards, 30 yards, they're making it 10, 15 yards wide. So quite simply, loft of club. Yeah, loft is your friend. Yes, but always the right amount of loft. Not too little, not too much. First tee, and a man who had a good day, Chris Fensom, 12 handicapper. 
And he hit a lot like this. In the end, he would post 34 points, which was good enough to get into the top 10 and qualify him for the World Championship at Rockcliffe Hall in Durham, but not quite good enough to make the top four on the day. Let's hand down to William. He's on the tee with local lad Tony Camilleri. Tony, local boy, first time? Yeah, I've watched the Trilby Tour for years. Um, really, always, always wanted to play in it. This is me, my own course. So I'm hoping that you know I'm gonna play the course the way I know how to play it. So uh, family today. and friends with you today, big family crowd. Family and friends, yeah. Got uh, all my mates out the back there, <laughs> cheering me on. All I need to do is get off this first tee. How will the nerves be on that first? Yeah, well the, the nerves are bad now. They've been bad all night. <laughs> but if we can get past the first tee, I know that'll be all right. Tony Camilleri, popular man, and all his fans keen to see a good one. Not a body movement this swing. Oh, yeah. oh and they love it. Maybe a little excessively, perhaps slightly set up, but onwards for a really good day. Also in Tony's group is Gareth Williams, six handicapper. Lots of applause, but this is long down the left-hand side, clatters onto the path, misses the buggy, into the bushes. But I suppose left wing in homage to Ryan Giggs. Seems fair. Back onto the, the first green, and this is Aaron Studdard, a multi Trilby Turian, and narrowly missing on this occasion. And it was a DNQ, did not qualify. 32 points, not good enough. That's how high the standard is. Gutted. Dean Cox up ahead at the third. Tough par four. Bogey, but he's quite happy with that. Got himself out of trouble with a really good 10-footer. Did not qualify. 27 points, despite the knuckles. We don't like that on the Trilby Tour. We'd like a nice, firm handshake. Long, long putt at the seventh for Neil Morley. Looks good all the way. Oh, how about that? How do you respond to that? You respond to it like you just don't care. Doing the Trilby stroll. We're going to take a break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. The perfect gentleman's playground. Welcome back to a sunny but breezy day. 2013 Trilby Tour Championship of Lancashire is being played at Worsley Park. And the players are really knuckling down now and trying to qualify for those top four spots. Let's go to the 14th. This is David Smith, four handicapper. And judging that one perfectly. So within 25 feet, that one. Outside opportunity for a birdie two. Playing alongside him is Colin Brown. Who's even better. He plays off three. And hits a better tee shot. Very much downwind. That's why the ball didn't stop very quickly. So Smith's birdie putt. 26 points to this stage. 
needs to have something happen for him and because of that putt things got better birdie two yes we see we saw that dave we got you we got your back 34 points in the end qualified for the world championship but not the final four spots colin who saw a long putt go in for birdie two attempting to emulate that kept his head very still and matched him brilliant but not brilliant enough to have anything at the end of today a d and q did not qualify 30 points just won't cut the mustard what about our old friend marcel dl five handicapper he's played many times has never qualified on the trilby tour Oh, he's just missing that one. More disappointment. Because today, 30 points, D and Q for DL. Much to think about. Same group, Howard Battersby. First par three on the back nine. And with some of the breezy conditions, hard to get it super close. So no birdie in shoe for Howard and no success either. 32 points. DNQ did not qualify. You really don't want to be a DNQ, do you? Wigan's birdie attempt. Had a good look to it. In fact, so did his back nine. So good that he qualified for the final. On 34 points. So something to take away from a good day in Lancashire. Let's hear from the director of golf at Worsley Park, Adam Mool. Uh, the course is just approaching 14 years old. Um, it's a uh, Ross McMurray design of uh, European golf design. Um, it's uh, a great challenge. Um, presents a, a real sort of variety and challenge to the average golfer, but we've, we've hosted European Challenge Tour events. Um, the likes of Brandon Grace, um, Alvaro Quiros, they've all tested themselves here. And on a day like today, it's great to see some real sort of uh, fantastic amateurs tackling this, uh, this course. There's, uh, there's water on a number of the, the sort of key holes, um, which um, certainly with the, the nerves perhaps jingling already will we'll sort of tax them even more. Um, large greens, um, plenty of movement through those greens, um, some tricky bunkering. Um, so it, it does present a, a, a real challenge to all aspects of the, the individual's game. Uh, feature hole at Worsley Park is the, the seventh hole. Um, lovely par three, surrounded by trees and rhododendron. Um, it plays over a, a lake um, across a small brook to a, a green which sits across from the player. Um, measuring anything up to 180 yards, uh, it's all about club selection and making sure that you, you hit the, the target. Who's this? It's Gareth, the wild man Williams, in amongst the buttercups after another horrific shot and trying to find an escape route. Quite frankly, it's not very straightforward. Get back to him in a minute. We'll catch up with Tony Camilleri, whose renter crowd deserted him after six dreadful holes. And now he's playing in the lovely organised silence of Worsley Park. A thoughtful Camilleri. Williams again. Thrashing the buttercups and getting this one out this time. Haven't seen him hit a good shot yet. All over the park. Camilleri's birdie putt at 15. Only 23 points to this stage. And that one goes missing. And so does Tony. He's a DNQ, 27 points. And it hurts, look at the face. Oh dear. Richard Chisholm, 18 points on the front nine. And steady putting like that, when you're on or around the green in the right number, it's going to bode well. Chisholm put a confidence. 
Let's go to the 18th. Robin Vidler. Again, played well on the front line, but he struggled since. And had a crack at this. It's a wonderful approach. Almost a heart attack. It would be all right if he could knock it in. Neil Chambers at the 15th, playing off a six handicapper. And going well, 30 points to this point. Keep the head still, back and through. It's all so simple, it sounds it anyway. Misses, and he misses the top four spots, but does qualify for the Trilby Tour World Championship final. 35 points, not quite good enough. Grimacing all the way at the clubhouse. Fiddler's on the hoof. We're following his progress at the 18th. Birdie putt, 32 points to this stage. Not quite, but with a shot, it's 35 points. He gets through to the Trilby Tour World Championship final. Good day for the Vidler. Appearing in Batman soon. Look at the method. Lining it up. Trying to get everything right. No glove, no love, they say. So he hasn't got sweaty palms. He's coping with the pressure. Is Taylor. Nice rhythm, too. A little bit of a firm bounce, but plenty of check on the second. 18th hole once again. And this is Wild Man Williams. And he smashes this down the right after a good tee shot across the path. And he needs to make something happen. Needs a miracle. Taylor finishing up on the 15th. We saw the approach. Putt down the hill. 29 points at this stage. A lot of the players glad to have tap-ins. I'm saying it's a tap-in. It was. Very good day's golf. Back to the trials and tribulations of Williams, 33 points. You see how he's struggling because you need to get the 36 at least. Over the bunker. And that's unbelievable. Well, no wonder they're clapping. That's outrageous. All of a sudden, from zero to hero in a heartbeat. 36 points. Top, top effort. Even though it was a miracle. Here's the beast. Bunkered, 34 points. Just a nice tidy finish. Little up and down, and he's through. Oh, and it was a bit of an agricultural hack from there. Awkward lie, ball below his feet. At least he's given himself a part. What about his big mate, Tom Muldoon? This was Tom's action at the 13th. So he was ahead of the game. And his brand of finding the fairways and finding the targets proving to be very profitable. 18th hole to finish on 37 points. Birdie attempt for Cummins. Shouts of get in. Very good day, 36 points. We'll have to wait and see. Joint clubhouse leader at this stage. And definitely through to the Trilby Tour Championship final. But will he get some more and become the champion of Lancashire? Jimmy Gribbin. So, so unlucky. Captain of the club. King of all he surveys and, well, he's been underwhelming today. Little tap in 19 points. He didn't want to finish in the 20s. Congratulations, James, you haven't. You finished in the teens. Oh, the ignominy of it all. Sun shining on Taylor. This putt to finish on 36 points. Through the shadow, up the hill. Hit it hard enough. And if you're Luxon, you can do that. We've seen some tremendous finishes for players grasping for a top four spot. That's a chance on 36 points. 
Well, that's Coronation Street's Alan Halsall. He's in the crowd, normally at the Rovers. That actually is real beer this time, as opposed to ginger ale, which I'm assured the whole cast drink when they're filming. Chisholm at the final hole and the final putt, he hopes. This is for 38 points, and that's surely good enough. and bashed it through. 37 points, take your time. Fine effort, clubhouse leader. That qualifies for the four-man playoff. 37 points, one under the par if you like. It all comes down to what you can do at the last. Muldoon's effort for 40 points. Birdie with a stroke, net eagle. And would you believe it, watched by his friend the Beast, the Wizard does the business. Best of the day, 40 points. Looking forward to that four-man scrap at the end. So 37 points, good enough to get you through to the final four. For the rest on 36, it's a shootout. And it'll be Taylor, Williams and Commons from exactly 100 yards. Two from three qualify, no countbacks. It's always a shootout on the Trilby Tour. That was Taylor, fine effort. And that was Williams. And what about the Beast? He's been into this position before, never ever got through. And that situation, quite simply, is not going to change. So commiseration for the Irishman, but he does qualify for the World Championship final. So he has something to take away. Not happy. The minimum requirement on the Trilby Tour is to finish in the top 10. Well, these players did in Lancashire. Chris Fensom, Lee Wegener, and David Smith tied eighth. Neil Chambers and Robin Vidler were sixth. Kevin Commons, the beast, misses out again, but he'll go through to the Trilby Tour World Championship in Durham. And it's between Tom Muldoon, Richard Chisholm, Andrew Taylor and Gareth Williams to find the champion of Lancashire. That's next, after the break. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. Welcome back to Worsley Park. It's crunch time. It's the playoff. Four men have a chance, but only glory for one. It's played over three holes, a par four, a par three, and a par five. That's the first, the 14th, and the 18th. And there's William Hunt geeing them all up, making them as relaxed as he can, not and first to go will be the 40-point shooter, Tom Muldoon. Tom Muldoon, 51 years old, Cabra Castle Golf Club. I'm a publican. A, a mixed bag today, and I finished off well the last six holes. I, I uh, seemed to conquer, and I was delighted with the way I finished. Conditions were perfect, uh, very warm today. 
it must be in the mid to high twenties, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better day. The wizard, straight as a die, once again, long game, not letting him down. Just easing into the rough on the right hand side. Next up, Richard Chisholm, 37 points. He looks nervous. Richard Chisholm, 29, from Ashford Manor Golf Club, and I'm a guest man. It was good. The first uh, tee shot weren't great. I stuck it in the trees on the right. A few good little putts, a few good little bunkers up and downs, saves. I got to play off last year um, and blew out on the last hole, so I'm hoping to go one better this year. Richard Chisholm. William Hunt looking on. And has he put him off? He tries to put everybody off. Warm applause. Down the left, hits that cart path, misses the buggy. However, that is the professional miss. Gareth Williams has been literally everywhere but on the fairways. Gareth Williams, 25 years old, bank manager, Bill Wells Golf Club. Very enjoyable. I mean, not every day you get Ryan Giggs following you around the golf course, a bit of additional pressure on the first tee, but great day, really good. It's surreal to be honest, it's one of those things where you sort of wander onto the first tee, see him stood there behind it and take a double take to see that it was Ryan. Chipping in from 40 yards on 18 in front of the cameras is always uh, quite nice for gallery watching. Fantastic day. So to the first tee in the playoff for uh, Williams, who's been everywhere, but straight. Crowd love it. Now where's this one going to finish up? Does he take on the fairway? Oh he does. Best swing of the day. What a time to pull that one off. And fourth and final man to play, Andrew Taylor. Andrew Taylor, player 14. I'm a joiner and I play at the Titherington Club. Very uh, nervous off the first, the snap up didn't help, but we um, managed to get past that and it went, it went well today, enjoyed it, really good. You know, for the pressure and to get in the playoff now, that'll definitely be the biggest achievement in golf. I'm not, um, I'm not playing to expect to win, I just play to, to try and have a good hole. It's not about a fantastic day, it's about winning. Andy Taylor. Sounded good, looked good. It's left. Oh, it doesn't hit the buggy. It goes back 50 yards in the wrong direction. So he's a long way away from the target. Best tee shot came from Gareth Williams. He hasn't been where the mower's been all day. And he's hit a low scuddler. He does have a shot here at the first. And all in all, he'll probably take that. A little bit of chipping and putting. The man who pitched in at the final hole. Not too disappointed. Two shots also for Tom Muldoon, the wizard. Receiving 12 shots on the day. And this one making its way towards the front part of the green. But not putting. Andrew Taylor. Remember his shot? Hitting the board and going back the wrong way. This is left, but how far left? Oh, over there. Need some luck. That could be disastrous. And the best tee shot of all, even though it's not in the fairway. Richard Chisholm. Can he get this on the dance floor? Over 400 yards is par four. And front right, so pretty much honours even for three. Taylor in trouble. Muldoon's short game is red hot normally. Up and over with a flop shot. Couldn't have played that any better. Under all that pressure as well. Caddy delighted. Luck of the Irish. Williams third shot. 